coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Can a six foot 10 inch basketball player fit into a 1967 Camaro? We have the seat moved all the way back, so it's definitely touching the back seat. We visit with former NBA All-Star Larry Nance. You want a rare car? We have a rare car. Uh, there were only 600 of them built originally. Yeah. And a gentleman who brought this Oldsmobile home back in 1963. I really thought I had something. Plus. As you can see here, it's starting to come off. You can see the metal starting to come through. Bringing automotive trim back to life in Under the Hood. See this 72 Corvette? It blows bubbles. Out what? Out the <laughs> If that's not a tease, we don't know what is. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, and we've come to a pretty hopping cruise in, don't you think? We're at Bellasino's Pizza and Grinders in Stowe, Ohio. It's a relatively new cruise, just in its second year. It's obviously caught on. Rick, you're a guy who always had a dream of buying a certain kind of car. Right, and when I was in high school. And what kind of car was it? 49 Mercury. And what's sitting next to you? 49 Mercury. Congratulations. <laughs> it all came together. Still getting it. <laughs> Took a while though, oh, huh? Oh yeah. From high school time. to now? Right. When did you pick it up? Well, about a year ago. What was it about the 49 Merc? And obviously it James was... James Dean. It was James Dean? Yeah, basically. My, and I had two buddies that had a 50 and a 51, which are about the same. They had chop tops and everything. And I couldn't afford one back then. <laughs> so you I were, really can't now either, but. <laughs> you were a rebel with a cause without the cash yeah. for a while anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> what was it about the styling of this car? Because uh, obviously the James Dean image is huge and it always has been with the 49 Mercs, but it's what just about got the styling? great lines, I think. The way it, it slopes back and everything. I bought just fell in love with them. <laughs> what have you done to this one, Rick, since you bought well, it? Well, I put the spotlights on, the mirrors. Did right below the molding, we put this two tone on it, put skirts on it side pipes, change the hubcaps, little little odds and ends. Just enough to give it the old, the My old own Rick appeal. touch, right. right? After waiting since high school, Yeah. what do you think now when you go to the garage and take a look? Well, I'll tell you, I almost like driving this better than I do my 40. <laughs> but I, I enjoy it. After waiting since high school for it, you better enjoy it more than your <laughs> oh, 40. Oh, I have to. <laughs> I got to. <laughs> Great looking car, Rick. Thank you. Thank and you very congratulations much. Congratulations on uh, making the dream become reality. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the expo. <laughs> Ralph, you have two of our favorite things going for you tonight. First of all, a rare car, your Oldsmobile Starfire, and you're the original owner of this car. When did you buy this thing? 9-11-63. September 11th, 1963. And you were just a young man at the time, buying an old Starfire. What did you think of this car at the time when you bought it? Oh, it was, I really thought I had something. <laughs> <laughs> As time went on, I always liked the car. Always drove nice, run good, so. Uh, at some point though, you parked it. Yes, I parked it about eight, 10 years ago. And uh, I ended up, had the motor out of it, and then my son talked me into, uh, doing the rest of it, so that's what happened. He done the painting. And, and your son does body, automobile does work for work, a living. Yeah. So it was sitting in the garage, just engine out, needing a restoration. What did it look like before the restoration? It really looked good before. Did it? Yeah. I brought it back to original, the way it was, but we had it off the frame and uh, everything was apart. Everything that come apart was apart. So, same color? Same color. Same trim? Same trim. Same color interior? That's right, white. What was the toughest part? Put it back together uh, with all the pieces and began to wonder if I'd ever get it together. <laughs> <laughs> you look at it now, does it look as good as it did in September of 63? Uh, all in all, it looks better. Does it? Better detailed, better than it was or new. It looks nice and I've always liked that car. So your son had the right idea? Yeah. Jim, every once in a while we run across a car that you know just by looking at it is rare, but you're not sure why. Mm -hmm. Tell us why your 57 Pontiac Bonneville is so rare. Well, uh, there were only 600 of them built originally, and uh, they were one built for each one of the dealers in the country. Because of the fuel injection? Yes. Uh, well, the 57 Chevy had really taken off, and Pontiac wanted to kind of get 
away from the, the farmer look. They always had uh, suspenders, we called up over yep. the hood. Yep. So anyway, they built 600 of them and uh, sent them around to the dealers around the country and uh, the dealers uh, sold them to one of their favorite customers or whatever. But uh, uh, a lot of them fell by the wayside. The transmissions weren't real strong in them. And so they fell by the wayside and another problem was the fuel injection. Uh, the mechanics uh, just didn't know how to fix them. So a lot of them were taken back to the dealers and the dealers, free of charge, put three twos on them. And they took the fuel injection off and put uh, tri-powers on them. But, wow. uh, this is number 104 of uh, 600. And, uh, uh, I what? bought it out in California uh, about eight years ago. Brought it back and uh, we did a frame off restoration on it and new paint. Uh, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a very easy car to restore because there was no rust and it had never been racked and very low miles. And when did you become aware of the fuel injected 57 Pontiac Bonneville and what made you want to get one? Oh, probably back in the 60s. Uh, I've always liked Pontiacs, uh, uh, GTOs and Firebirds, and, uh, but I just like the looks of the 57. And uh, the fuel injected, uh, that's a real nice add-on. Uh, it it's, uh, enhances the, uh, the looks and the mystique of the car, you know. Another great look is the exhaust into the bumper. Yeah. Uh, the Star Chiefs and the Bonnevilles, uh, the V8 cars had dual exhausts, and they all went through the bumper except station wagons. 600 of them, Jim. Right. How many have you seen? Uh, you obviously own one of them, but how many are all uh, About 25. You've seen 25? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, the guys that have them kind of know each other. It's a little club. Yeah, it's kind of a little club. Very close-knit uh, club, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's a nice collector's piece. It's, it's not 100% original. The top is should be white, but uh, I put the black on it. I thought it enhanced the uh, the looks of it. With 25,000 original miles. All right. There was, 20, <laughs> there was 23 on it when we got it. Uh, it had sat for long periods of time in California uh, during its life. Uh, it originally was sold in Walla Walla, Washington, and then went to Half Moon Bay, California, and then here. When I got on the plane to San Francisco coming back, back home, uh, I was kind of clicking my heels together. I was pretty happy. <laughs> uh, I found one that uh, budget-wise uh, we could work with. and uh, I had a lot of help with it, you know, my guys. And, but uh, yeah, it was a victory. Congratulations. A fun victory. Guess why Larry Nance won the NBA's first slam dunk contest? The main reason I want to win is so I can buy this 67 Camaro I've seen. Larry's next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work, we do the marketing, we sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Larry Nance was a high flyer, one of the most athletic forwards in NBA history. He played 13 seasons in the NBA, six and a half with the Phoenix Suns and six and a half with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Since his retirement from pro basketball, Larry's life has revolved around his two main loves, his family and the Chevrolet Camaro. Larry, as long as I've known you, there has always been a Camaro parked in this driveway. You and Camaros go way back. What's the story? Well, the first one I had uh, when I won the Slam Dunk Contest, the reason I won, the main reason I wanted to win, so I can buy this 67 Camaro I've seen. And uh, so I ended up winning that and ended up buying the Camaro, and that's, that's just my favorite body style. I'm a Chevy guy, and I love Camaros, and I've had quite a few since that time. So beating Dr. J wasn't the inspiration. The inspiration was get some extra cash to buy a 67 Camaro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, Dr. J was definitely... Uh, the superstar that I, I loved and, and it was great beating him, but 
you know, in the back of my mind, I seen that red Camaro that I was going, as soon as I got home, uh, I was going to get. I love the shape of the body. Um, I love the way they sound. I just, man, the first time I seen that car, it was just, just awesome. And you could do so many things to them and they're really easy to buy parts and really easy to fix up. My father was a mechanic and, you know, we always worked on cars and I always held a flashlight for him. That's when I really fell in love with it and, um, you know, I, I've been worked on cars way longer than I played basketball. Larry, you're the only guy I know who has a daily driver that has how big of a tire on the back? I think they're about 13 to 14 inches wide. <laughs> it's got a, this mini tub and uh, it's got Mickey Thompson tires on there that has a lot of traction and, and uh, ladder bars. So this car pretty much set up for the racetrack, but I drive it on the street. So it really performs well. This is a 67. I've had it about two years. I bought it all blue and um, we kind of took the whole thing apart and put it back together and I had a friend paint it for me uh, and just, just build it from scratch and now I'm really happy with the way it is. Now this is not the biggest car in, in the world and you're six foot ten and you said maybe six, nine and a half now without the cartilage. Oh yeah, 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 I'm a little shorter. <laughs> Show us how you fit in this thing. Well, right now we have the, we have the seat moved all the way back, so it's definitely touching the back seat. And it, you moved it back, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, we had to pull it up and move it back. And uh, so, actually I have pretty good room. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. And it's got a six-speed transmission, a Tremec transmission in it, and um, probably 800, 850 horsepower, so. <laughs> Buzzing around for Northeast the Ohio. Hmm? Buzzing around Northeast Ohio. Yeah, that's a lot for the street, but you know, I, I love the way it sounds and love love working on these things. What's under the hood, Larry? Well, so it's, it's a 565, and notice that none of this stuff is original looking. It's just a big motor sitting up on there. It's a 565 with a Dominator on it. Like I said, about 800, 850 horsepower. Wow. And uh, it really is all set up for performance. I'm planning on holding on to this one. Um, you know, it took me a long time and a lot of money to fix it like this and I really am happy with it. It's got a beautiful paint job. It's got a motor that runs great in it. And uh, yeah, I'm not planning on doing it, not selling it no time soon. Larry, this one's the nasty machine. I, and I don't know if a lot of people know it, but when you quit playing NBA basketball, you went into drag racing and, and you were in machines like this, taking them right down the track. Absolutely, this is a pro mod car. This is not, matter of fact, this is the first real professional race car I bought. And uh, I didn't actually drive it, but this car brought more happiness and, and uh, actually was the fastest car in the world for two years. Was it really? And uh, won three races with it and finished number three in the world, I think. And uh, it's just, this is my baby here. This, I'm so happy to have it back. Yeah, and you just said have it back. You originally bought this when? I bought it in 1990 and uh, and I had, we had it four or five years and then we sold it and two other people had it and I'll, when they had it I always would go watch it run yep. and um, finally I had an opportunity, one of the guys wanted to get rid of it so I just, I don't know what I'm going to do with it quite yet but I end up buying it back and um, really happy to have it because none of the Camaros I've had have brought me more happiness than this one. Now when you raced you didn't race this car, but you did race other cars. I raced in pro down, stock. Taking them down the strip, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I raced in pro stock, which I raced a Dodge. Then I raced uh, Chevy Cobalt with my fastest car, my most successful year. And um, you know, I, nothing in the world like being in those cars and working on them and, and watching them perform. And then those, those races you go to and you qualify, mm -hmm. it's all worthwhile. You want to put this back on the track. I definitely want to put this back on the track. Um, you know, I paid for it to get the car. Now yep. I got to... Uh, Dude it up as your favorite NBA team, of course. Absolutely. With the number 22 on the roof. I am so proud of this team and the, the things that Dan Gibbert has done with them. And uh, I think they're really going to do well. So, and I still live in this area and I think, you know, I'm going to run, race this car yep. in this area. And I think people really appreciate seeing that logo on it. And uh, you know, right now we got to raise enough money to um, get a motor for it. And, 
I don't think Janie gonna let me buy more. Yeah, than I, time I, soon. I, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna, you know, race it locally in Norwalk and around tracks around here, and uh, just have fun with it. It's old, but it will perform with the new ones, and, I, and I'm out to prove that that it will run with a new car. Are your emblems looking a little old, dull, lifeless? And the trick is when you do it this way is not to stop in the middle of a wide, flat spot, because then you'll see your brush strokes. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. A critical part of any restoration is the trim, the stuff that you might take a little bit for granted, but it certainly makes a difference. Adam Gall from RK Motors Restoration, gonna go over a couple of things that you can do, not only to make it look good, but save a little money in the process too, Adam. Yeah, yeah, if you're uh, you know, looking for parts for your car, say like a swap meet, you might come across a bumper like this. Um, it's, not, it's not very good looking, Adam. No, it's not very pretty, but with a little bit of work, we have steel wool here, with a little bit of work, a little bit of elbow grease, a lot of this stuff will come off. And, you know, you just keep working it back and forth. And, like around here, with the rust. Just a little bit of rust. A lot of that will come right off. Nice. And then you take any kind of all metal polish and just work that in. Look at that, it looks like new chrome again. Your emblems look a little, uh a little shaky. Yeah, they're a little bit old. They've been worn. Uh, as you can see here, the the Fury emblem, the black is worn out in the back. The chrome's not very brilliant. So what we got to do on this specific one is on the back, the top emblem is held on with like a solder. So you have to grind that off. And then you can see here, there's two prongs that hold it on to this emblem. So after we take that off, so now we need to take the black off. Just put the new black on. So we take a little bit of lacquer. Just regular lacquer. Just regular lacquer. Since everything was painted pre-1970 on this car, all the paint that they used was a lacquer based. So now with a little bit of regular lacquer, all this paint will come right off. I got a cup over here full of lacquer and you just let it soak for a few minutes and all of it comes right off. So while that's soaking. We have another emblem while that one's soaking. Nice. Oh, that's good planning so got, right there. We got this one who's already been cleaned up. You can see all the paints out. This is a, you know half of an SS emblem. And you slowly, oops. Don't shake. Don't shake. Get in all the little nooks and crannies. You're also getting it on the top, but that's not a concern? No, not right now. Okay. How'd you do in art class in school? Not too good. Great. That's comforting. <laughs> and the trick is when you do it this way, is not to stop in the middle of a wide flat spot because then you'll see your brush strokes. You let that set up for a little bit, let okay. it get dry. Not all the way dry, but set up dry. Now we're back to this. Now it's been soaking for a few minutes. Corners are always tough, you know, because it collects everything. So you gotta make sure you get your corners really well. Now you can go grab your steel wool that we just showed you on the bumper. Ah, the trusty steel wool. The trusty steel wool. And you clean up all your edges here. Okay. You get all the rest of the paint off if there's any. Your dirt. And then it cleans up the chrome too, so you got a nice shiny edge. And what we have here is just regular flat black paint. And you just put on light coats, let it set up, put on another light coat. The, light, the lighter the coats, the better. All right, now that the paint's set up here on these emblems, now we can get rid of this rag, it's all dirty. 
might have some contaminants on it. Now we got a nice new rag. I, I put it on this wood here because the top of my toolbox has got a texture and you need something flat and a little bit firm. So now we take a little bit more lacquer. Love that lacquer. Yeah, it works good. It works on everything. We just dampen the area. All right, make sure we don't have any excess. And then you take the emblem, you put it upside down, and you just wipe it. So the inset area stays white. Correct, and now you're just hitting all your high spots. Wiping the paint off, taking it back to the Right, to the urine. Exactly. So there we go. So now all your, there's some lint in there, but now your top edges are clean. Now it looks like your factory standard SS emblem. Now with this one, it doesn't have as much detail like the S. Dry it up nicely. Yes, now you got that flat, nice sheen to yep. it on the black. So you do the same thing like we did on the S on the top edges. Now that we wiped it down with the steel wool earlier, we took all the imperfections off the Chrome. So it's a nice smooth area to lift the paint right off of. Exactly, exactly. Now Adam, this seems like a, a little bit of work for something that you would think, eh, I could go out and just buy this and get a fix. Is, is that not the case? The emblem I'm working on now is a 1960 Fury emblem. They're not that easy to come by. Good luck finding one, huh? Exactly. So that we have to take the time and restore all the, em all the emblems individually, like we are doing here. The gold on here, it's pretty much the same process as chroming a plate, so you can take some steel wool and clean it up and get that shine back. And remember the prongs. And this falls right back into place. We'd have to re-solder the back, but other than that, there's a restored emblem. So you have a beautiful new 50-year-old Fury emblem. That's right. Nicely done, Adam. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to Bellasinos on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Mike, it's a beautiful 1972 Corvette, but that's not why we're talking to you. You're right, I got something very special in this car. You told me this, Mike. I'm, I'm having a little trouble buying it. Explain. Your, your, your Corvette does what? It blows bubbles. Out what? Out the back end. Oh. You're going to show us, I hope, right? I definitely will. I'm going to put a show on like you wouldn't believe. Larry, we appreciate you letting us come out. Take a look at you, take a look at the Camaros. No problem, man. I really appreciate you guys coming out. I left my old Ford at home because the last time I brought it over, you almost beat me up. Well, that is true. Most of the time <laughs> people bring, uh, bring Fords over here. They usually leave a lot of oil in my yard, so I just didn't want that this time. That'll do it for this edition of Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps. Larry, a pleasure. Hey, thank you very much. We'll see you next time right here on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.